Everything Everywhere All at Once is a quirky multiverse movie with a story that is at once profound and simple. At its heart, the movie is a family story about generational and cultural differences and the expectations parents place on their children and what effects those expectations can have when multiplied over the multiverse. When the movie opened, it premiered in 10 theaters on March 25th and made a grand total of $501,305. It opened a wider release two weeks later in just over a thousand theaters and brought in six million. From there, it was a weird odyssey in theaters that never saw it shown in more than 2,220 theaters, but it stayed in theaters for nearly a year, raking in more than $100 million worldwide. Its studio, A24, is a relatively new studio and keeps its releases to suitably modest projects. They have found success in buying distribution rights to indie films such as Ex Machina and Room, as well as the worldwide rights for the horror film The Witch. In Everything Everywhere All at Once, they found their most profitable venture in the history of the company. Michelle Yeoh, a film legend on two continents with a resume that places her at the top of her field, stars as the protagonist, Evelyn Kwan Wang. Along with her husband Raymond Wang, played by Kei Hui Kwan, they own a laundromat that is in trouble with the IRS. The movie opens with them trying to juggle operation of the business, getting ready for a Chinese New Year's party, managing a visit from Evelyn's demanding father from China, and settling things with the IRS audit. Thrown into all of this is Evelyn's daughter Joy, trying to introduce her girlfriend to her grandfather when he has not been informed that she is gay. While at the audit with their caseworker, played by Jamie Lee Curtis, Evelyn's husband is taken over by a universe-hopping version of himself. He tries to recruit her to fight someone who is winnowing through the multiverses looking for a specific Evelyn. Her. He explains that she can use her mind to jump through every version of herself taking on the memories and skills of those other versions. Evelyn dealing with the revelation and Jamie Lee Curtis turning out to be working for the evil force looking for Evelyn takes up the first third of the movie. During a fight with Jamie Lee Curtis and Minions, Evelyn learns the evil force is her daughter from the same universe that the version of Raymond that is possessing her husband came. In that universe, Evelyn discovered how to move through other universes and pushed her daughter into being one of those to do so. However, contacting that many versions of herself broke Joy's mind, turning her to evil. Evil Joy began creating a singularity that looks like a giant bagel. Into this bagel she poured all of her life's disappointments and all of the disappointments of all of her other selves, turning it into something that could destroy the multiverse. This is what Raymond was trying to recruit Evelyn to help stop. As Evelyn experiences more and more versions of herself, she becomes susceptible to the arguments Evil Joy makes. As she is on the brink of not only destroying her life and the lives of all of her other selves, but also joining Joy, she realizes that her instincts to fight need to be tempered by her other half, her kind-hearted husband. And with that realization, she's able to bring evil joy to the realization that what she was looking for while looking for all of those other Evelyns was the one who could see beyond what her shattered mind was doing and love her anyway, for herself. The movie wraps up with Evelyn fixing her life and family across all of the multiverses. Everything Everywhere All at Once is a heartwarming movie that is superbly acted on multiple fronts. And that was reflected in the awards the film has been showered with this award season. It has won one BAFTA, three Critics' Choice Awards, one Directors Guild Award, two Golden Globes, four SAG Awards, and seven Oscars. And it would appear the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts, and Sciences is tired of crap ratings for the Oscars, 
because they wound up doing as I suggested and stopped giving the best picture to movies nobody but critics and art film buffs like. Everything Everywhere All at Once won for Best Picture, Best Director, Best Actress for Michelle Yeoh, Best Supporting Actor for Kei Hui Kwan, Best Supporting Actress for Jamie Lee Curtis, Best Original Screenplay, and Best Film Editing. All of them well-deserved. It is a shame Stephanie Hsu did not win an award also. But I agree with the Academy that Jamie Lee Curtis was the better of the two supporting actresses. When this movie came out around the same time Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness was in theaters, I will admit to not giving it a second thought beyond thinking it looked good. I am always up to see Michelle Yeoh, and have been since I first saw her in the James Bond film Tomorrow Never Dies opposite Pierce Brosnan. She was equally good, if not better, in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. The film that cemented my love for Michelle Yeoh, however, was the mildly cheesy superhero film Silverhawk, in which she played a masked vigilante known as Silverhawk, who fights crime while also being the extremely successful businesswoman the rest of the world knows her as. Does this sound familiar? As she has gotten older, she has not diminished in the least in her ability to fill a role and make it her own. That the Academy is finally recognizing her for this film is fitting. The long overdue. Jamie Lee Curtis is also long overdue to be recognized for her skill before the camera by the Academy. This is likely just as much a Lifetime Achievement Award as it is recognizing her excellent performance in EEAAO. And her performance was just that much more interesting because she does not look like the bruiser henchman of a looming evil. And she pulls it off with silky skill. Kehui Kwan was also very deserving. I was not feeling his performance as the movie begins. But as soon as the other Raymond takes over his body, he is simply magnificent. The fact that he manages to act in such a way that you know there are two Raymonds is exactly what his role called for, and he executes it perfectly. It is a shame that he was basically absent from acting for over two decades because Hollywood simply could not look past his roles as a child when he grew up. He was a great child actor and that skill did not diminish over the years. His Oscar was also well-deserved. The directors slash writers also are not robbing anyone with their double wins. The story was well-written, with an emotional heart to the esoteric story concept, and the two were mixed together to great effect. They created a multiverse movie that actually put the bigger-budget, special-effects muddled mess of a movie that was supposed to be Disney Marvel's Doctor Strange 2 to shame. It was a more intelligent movie, with more heart to it than anything Disney Marvel managed to throw together. The film editor also deserves his Oscar, as this movie could not have been easy to put together in post-production. But he managed it smoothly and in a coherent fashion without making it seem choppy or abruptly cut together. Overall and given the field of nominees it was up against, Everything Everywhere All at Once deserved its night at the 95th Academy Awards. It was nominated for 10 Oscars and won 7. One of those it lost was for Best Supporting Actress for Stephanie Hsu, and she lost to her co-star Jamie Curtis. One of the other two it lost was Best Original Score, which was given to All Quiet on the Western Front. And to be honest, the score for this movie was not so memorable that I think it was robbed. The last nomination it lost on was for Best Original Song, and there is no way This Is a Life was better than Natu Natu. If you have not seen RRR or the video they cut together for the song, then go watch that and then tell me RRR did not deserve its Oscar. And then I will tell you that you are still wrong. For the most part, it was a great night for the little indie multiverse film that could. 
Powering past $100 million worldwide as the most unlikely of sci-fi movies that simply took the 95th Oscars by storm. Walking away with a gaggle of trophies and magical moments that the Oscars used to be known for. While I cannot say Everything Everywhere All at Once is a movie that is eminently rewatchable like Top Gun Maverick is, it is a good movie that was deserving of most of the awards it has gotten this award season. And some of those taking some of those trophies home have been well deserving of recognition for a long time. Congratulations, Academy. Keep this up and you might stave off relegation to streaming for a while longer. Now, if you were really interested in making yourself must-see TV, you would call Ricky Gervais and stop gimping around with the safest of safe choices in Jimmy Kimmel. His ratings alone should tell you he is not going to be a draw. The Academy used to go out and get people to host that would be draws in and of themselves, like Billy Crystal. Put your big girl panties on and grow a spine. The list of people I would call before Jimmy Kimmel is long and filled with actually funny people. That is all for this Oscar retrospective video. Next up is Glass Onion. Until then, choose.